Every part of our research is going to rely so heavily on this, and this is this is the forefront. This is this is something which is a little, little bit conventional, and we have to invest in it. We have to invest in it very heavily because this is going to reap our rewards. And it's very very difficult to find really talented people to do this. Talented people with ambition, with imagination, that are not just delivering a service, but are able to make discoveries in their own right. And William Ritchie is one of them. <laughs> Matthew. Um, so it's true, I don't usually go into the lab and I don't wear a white coat. I usually wear a Star Trek t-shirt. Um, and I just sit behind a computer all day. Um, so what I want to say is that computer science is completely changing the way we do medical research. It's changing the way doctors diagnose and treat patients. And I'm going to show you why computer science is so important these days. So if you have a quick look at this curve here, this graph, what you see here is something called Moore's Law. It's how computer power increases in time. And to give you an idea of the scale of what we're looking at here, in 69, when NASA sent two men on the moon, they had a room full of computers, powerful computers, calculating gravity, orbits, and all this. If you took all those computers and put them into one superpower computer today, it'd be no more powerful than your iPhone. That's the scale of what we're looking at here. In red, what you see is the internet the complete size of the internet, the number of web pages that are created per day. Quite spectacular as well. But all this pales in comparison to this green graph here, which is the increase in biological and medical data created per second. Nothing is going as fast as the amount of biological data we are creating. Nothing. The number of transactions in finance, the internet, nothing is growing this fast. And so that's why they call people like me in to manage all this data. Now, most of this data is what we call genome sequencing. So, genome sequencing is where we unravel your DNA and we look at each single letter in your DNA code to try to understand what's happening. Now, the problem is that if I want to bring your genome, your whole DNA code, up onto a screen, I need 13,200,000 screens to look at it. So, when a GP says, I'd like to look at the genome, I'd like to see what's happening, well, my job is to say, ignore these 13 million screens there, just focus on this one screen. So my job is to reduce 13 million down to one and say this is where the problem is. So how do we do that? I'm going to explain how we reduce all this enormous data down to just one small set. This is how we do it. So this man here is called Roland Garros and he was an aviator during the First World War. And the French were losing against the Germans for each German plane that would come down three French planes were being shot down. And so this man had an idea. He said each time a French plane will land, we'll mark where all the bullet holes are on the plane. We'll make a diagram of where all these bullet holes are. And so he did this for hundreds and hundreds of planes, and he had a very specific diagram of where the bullets were hitting the French planes. And then he decided to reinforce the planes. So guess where he put the armor plating on the French planes? Did the bullets work? He put the armor plating where there were never any bullets. And his hypothesis was, well, all these planes are landing. They're being hit, but they're landing. So they're not hitting really crucial parts of the plane. All those planes that aren't landing are being hit in other parts. Well, it's the same thing with your genome. Your genome is being hit by bullets every day, all the time. They're called mutations. They're caused by UV, chemicals, physical damage, and just everyday wear and tear. And every day you have these mutations, these bullet holes. What you see up the top here is an example of a DNA sequence. It belongs to lemurs, our very, very distant relatives. And down the bottom is the sequence of humans, and all in between are our ancestors' primates. And as you can see, over millions of years of evolution, our DNA, DNA has accumulated bullet holes. Many, many bullet holes. And there's only one place where there were no mutations down the bottom, those six little letters. And the reason why there are no mutations there is because if you do get a mutation in those six little letters, then the individual will die and will not give any offspring. There will be no evolution. So that's what my lab does. We look at all our ancestors and I say, well, where are the sequences that have never changed all the way up to primates and even chickens who are almost as old as dinosaurs? And so I used this technique in the first lab where I arrived from France. And when I came to Australia, it was a lab that worked on blood, worked on leukemia, Professor John Rasko's lab. 
And one of the big mysteries for people who work on blood is what you see here. On the left are normal blood cells, common blood cells, and on the right are what we call neutrophils. They're responsible for your immune system. And you see they've got this really weird donut shape. And for 120 years they've observed this under the microscope and never understood why these cells have this strange donut shape. And so I ran a computer on the genome of these blood cells and said, well, actually, it looks as if it's these six letters here. They've never changed all the way up to mice. So he said, it's not possible. It can't be just six letters. So he changed these letters, and the poor mice could not create neutrophil cells anymore. So we discovered in 32 minutes of a computer calculation what people hadn't understood in over 120 years. So that's what computational biology does. We use computers to make it research much faster. So why should people invest in bioinformatics? So using computational tools to try to understand biology. The US have invested, Europe has invested since 1995, but Australia is lagging behind. So why should we invest? Number one, it's unbiased. The computer hasn't ever heard of a type of tissue or a cancer. It comes in with a novel spirit and it says, well, I don't know anything, just give me the data and we will find what is happening. Number two, it's transversal. This technique that I showed you that I applied on blood cells, we're using it on prostate cancer, breast cancer, uh, we're using it on Alzheimer's disease, sleep problems, we're using it on everything. A technique I developed for one lab can be used by all labs. And number three, it's our only edge. In a race towards the genome, where everybody's going to have the genome sequenced, China and Korea are killing us. They're doing it better, they're doing it faster, and they're doing it with much higher quality. But what they don't have is the computational tools to look through the DNA sequences and say, actually, the problem's right here. It's these six letters. And that's where Australia should be investing if we want to be part of this genome revolution. So just to finish this talk on a good story, this is the Beery family. And here you have a picture at the front, these two children, Alexis and Noah Beery. They were diagnosed at a very early age with cerebral palsy. And they were under treatment, and the treatment was failing. And so much so that they were coughing every night, they couldn't breathe, their mother had to pump them with adrenaline shots every night just to keep them alive. Luckily for them, their dad is a bioinformatician, like me. He had his children's genome sequenced, and he discovered that the problem was lying within a serotonin-related gene. They changed the treatment. These kids are now running, laughing, they're fine. And I'm telling you this because it's not in 10 years, it's not in 15 years, it's now. People are having the genome sequenced right now. And you're not going to ask in five years, oh, do you know of a good GP? You're going to say, do you know of a good bioinformatician who can look over my genes? And the answer should be yes. Thank you.